Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we will start learning a new book, a new safer, which is called The Duties of the Heart, Hodot Halevavot. This is a very cherished book written by Rabbi Bahia Ibn Pakuda and it's cherished by many, many Jews all worldwide. Uh, it's a book that talks about the heart, about the duties of the heart, of how to implement God's will in our hearts, how to do it out of love, and how to gain more perspective on Hashem, how to know Hashem better, how to work on our emunah, our trust and our faith. And it's, uh, it has kept many people going in very hard times. And uh, Rabbi Bahia Ibn Pakuda, Duties of the Heart, was a work that he wrote around a thousand years ago. He used to live in Spain, in Seville. He was a Dayan, a, a judge. And uh, there's not a lot that we can know about him. What we know is that the book was written in Arab, Arabic and it's been translated in, very, in a lot of different editions. And um, it says here in the foreword that he decided to write the duties of the heart. It says, I decided to write the duties of the heart down in a book so that I may, might expect of myself always to know them and bring myself to perform them. A book that would spur on the observant and stir up the indifferent, bolster the beginner and show the way to those who are perplexed. I wrote it to enlighten myself as well as to stimulate the simple and the negligent among the people of our faith. So it says here that he first started writing it for himself, but he wrote it for everybody, really. And many, many rabbis, very big rabbis, say beautiful things about this book. For example, Rabbi Yosef Karo, the Magid, the mentor angel as he was known, instructed um, his students to read duties of the heart daily, to subdue the Yetzer Hara, to bring down their evil incl inclination, not let it overpower them. The Holy Arizal, Isaac Luria, required of his students also to study this book on a daily basis in order to awaken the hearts to God more, more awesomeness, like to awaken the love for Hashem, to the awareness of God, the love of God, the awe of God. Yeah, Rabbi Yonah Lansofer, author of the Mail Tzedakah, wrote in his ethical will, a person, person should immerse himself in the duties of the heart, for from the, that book one can acquire the inner essence of the select qualities necessary for serving God. One must del delve into the book more deeply than one would delve into the study of the Nigaim and the Ohalos and profound systems of thought. So he's saying like it's very, very deep. Eliahu de Gaon of Vilna was fond of Menorah's Hamor and the duties of the heart. So we see from here all these very important rabbis uh, through the ages, uh, how they kept this book with them throughout their lives, how they learned from it, and how it allowed them and helped them perfect and refine themselves. So here we see also that the greatest good which the Creator has given man, having endowed him with the sophisticated faculties of perception and intelligence, is wisdom. This is the biggest tool he ever gave us. And wisdom is the life of man's spirit and the light of his intellect. It leads him to the will of God and saves him from his wrath in both this world and the world to come. So I can go on and on with the introduction of this book. It's, it's, it's eternal. It's, I don't know, around 100 pages. I really suggest that all of you get this book. Like you can go Amazon.com. It's Duties of the Heart by Rabbi Bahia Ibn Pakuda and it's translated by Rabbi Yehuda Ibn Tibon. So I really suggest that you have it with you, put it in your library, it's a jewel, it will enhance your home, it will enhance your life. There's 10 gates that Rabbi Pakuda talks about in his Sefer, about how we can connect to God in a better way. The first gate is the gate of the unity of God, and he comes to explain in this chapter everything about the oneness of Hashem. Then he has a gate of reflection. The third gate is the gate of serving God. The fourth gate of trusting God. The fifth gate is the gate of wholehearted devotion of all acts. The sixth gate is the gate of humility. 
The seventh gate is the gate of repentance. The eighth is the gate of self-accounting. The ninth gate is the gate of abstinence. And the tenth gate and the last one is the gate of love of God. So we're going to be starting all these gates. It's going to take us, uh, I don't know how long, but we'll go slowly but surely. And God willing, together, we will be able to go into a deeper understanding of Torah and mitzvot and the unity of God and our love in serving God. So I wish that we can all internalize all these teachings and just learn to live a little higher. So we'll begin with the first gate, the gate of unity of God. And here he says, it's an explanation of the multifaceted obligation to wholeheartedly acknowledge God's unity. So he says here, when he searched for the most essential principle and the cornerstone of the Jewish religion, he found that the most important part of the Jewish religion is the belief in the unity of God, God's unity. It's the root foundation of our religion and it is the very first of the Torah gates. And it is the acknowledgement of God's unity that separates the believer from the non-believer. So a person that believes in Hashem understands that everything is Him, that everything is united, everything is connected. He can see a Hashkaha Pratis in everything, divine interference in everything. His life is not a life bounded by coincidence and random acts. Everything is, he can see the hand of God in everything. So this is the difference between a person that believes and a person that doesn't. And the first words of God directed to, to Moses and, uh, and to the Jewish people in Mount Sinai were, I am Hashem your God and do not have other gods. This is the first words he, he told the people. So it's like saying, like, there's nothing else from me. There's nothing separate from me. This is, everything is me. And later on, he exhorted us through his prophet saying, listen, listen, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Ehad. Shema Israel, listen, Israel, Hashem is our God, Hashem is one. So you must understand that this section, the Shema, the Shema Israel, which is the quintessential prayer of the Jewish people, we know that in the Holocaust, for example, uh, there was a big rabbi, I can't remember his name right now, but he went to look for Jewish orphans uh, during and after the war, and when he would come to the orphanages, the, the priest would laugh at him and say, how are you going to know who is Jewish here? And he would tell, tell the, the, the people that would take care of the kids, like, let me come at bedtime and I'll, I'll know. And he would come at bedtime and when the kids were already in their beds ready to go to sleep, he would say, Shema Israel, Hashem Eloheinu, Hashem Ehad. And the kids that were Jewish started crying, Mama, Mama, Mama. Why? Because they remember their mother would... Uh, say this prayer to them before they went to sleep and this is the way that he was able to save thousands of children so we see that this Shema Israel a Jew that is not knowledgeable that is not uh, a connoisseur of Torah he doesn't know a lot but at least the Shema Israel is something that is embedded in his heart so we, we he tells us here that you must understand this section, the Shema, until its end and see how it wor its words proceed from subject to subject, covering 10 subjects corresponding to the number of the Ten Commandments. So each part of the Shema corresponds to the Ten Commandments. So first, we are commanded to believe in the Creator. Shema Israel, listen Israel, listen. Hashem, the word listen, Shema, is used here not in the sense of listening with the ear, but listening with the heart. Uh, with sensitivity and we will do and we will listen like when we said before receiving the Torah we said Naseve Nishma we will learn we will do and then we will learn and today I was talking to somebody and he says how can I start keeping Torah if I don't if I don't understand it and I said if you're gonna wait till you understand it you're never gonna keep Torah because there's many things that are not understandable to the human intellect we're finite beings Hashem is infinite we cannot put an infinite God in a finite mind that would be a disservice that's not Hashem so listen Israel and be careful to do it whenever the word listen Shema is used in this way the intent and meaning is none other than to believe and accept that we have to believe and we have to accept I always tell people People are waiting to see so they can believe. But the reality is the other way around. First you have to believe and then you're gonna see. If you don't believe, you're never gonna see. 
So after commanding us to believe and accept the three fundamentals of uh, just mentioned, which is to be believe in God with all our heart, with all our soul and with all our might, which the heart means the, the evil inclination, our Yetzer Hara, or our animal soul, with our, heart, with our mind is with our godly Neshama, with our divine spark, and with our might means with all our money, with all our possessions. So scripture then moves on to what we must add to them, namely the wholehearted love of God in the inner life and the outer life with our souls and with our might. So we have an inner, inner life and an outer life. One thing is what we feel, what we think. Another thing is how we project, how we behave. So as it says, love Hashem your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your might. I, and um, it means you have to do it both in thought, speech and action. It cannot be only in one side, it has to be in and out. And scripture then goes on to caution us about the duties of the heart, saying these words which I command you this day must be on your heart. You have to fill them with your emotions. And meaning that one should keep them always in one's heart and believe in them in the depths of one's being. You know, emotions are what you think. What you think is what you feel. So if you train yourself to think in a godly way, your emotions are going to be godly. They're going to be holy. But if your thoughts are not in a holy way, you're thinking about not so good th things, not so good thoughts, then this is how you're going to feel too. So then scripture proceeds to those duties of the limbs which require both knowledge and action as it says. Teach them to your children and if you have no children, speak to, of them. To educate a child is not the only reason why an adult should study. So, when it talks about children, it's talking about any student you have, any person that looks up to you, you're a role model, any person that sees you is a child. So here it says, scripture then continues, when you are at home, when you're traveling, on the road, when you lie down and when you get up. You know, Shema Israel, Hashem Eloheinu, Hashem Ehat. So this, this is what it's telling us, that it's with our limbs. Because we do it when we're home, when we're traveling, when we're in action, when we're doing things. For there is never anything to keep the heart and tongue from fulfilling the duties of the heart. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. If you're doing it with, with a consciousness and awareness of God, you have God with you always. It doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. So, as may, many may happen to other limbs, we have already discussed in the introduction how the duties of the heart are per perpetually binding. So it's always with us. It's, it's in our house, in our travels, when you go on a vacation, if you keep them in your mind and you keep living through them, they're always with you. And by keeping these words on, on one's lips continually, they are every one's consciousness and one's thoughts are never empty of God. So by reciting the Shema three times a day, you are continuously keeping them in mind. And, um, and you live with God in your head. So as King David said, I have placed God always before me. And by scripture, it is, I think, very close to you in your mouth and in your heart that you can do. So what it's telling us is that all the laws, all the mitzvahs, 613 mitzvahs, as hard as they seem, as complicated, maybe the world is too modern for them, people sometimes think, what the, to what the Shema is telling us is that they're ne not far away from us. They're very easy to attain. We just have to put our heart in them. And scripture then proceeds from duties of the limbs which require both knowledge and deed to those which consist of action alone. And gives three examples. One is bind them as a sign on your hand and then let them be frontlet in the center of your head. And it's talking about the tefillim that men put on their left hand and on their forehead and write them on the doorpost of your houses and on your gates. So every Jewish house you're gonna see has mezuzahs. So these reference here are to tefillim and mezuzahs, which bring ones to remember the Creator, to love Him wholeheartedly and to long for Him, that we yearn for God, just as lovers keep their love in mind. Just as when you're in love with someone and you can be working during the day and you're thinking about your loved one. So, Scripture gives three ways of remembering God so that they be stronger and more lasting in effect as the wise one King Solomon used to say, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. When you have a cord that's threefold, it's harder to break. So this section does cover 10 subjects 
five of them are spiritual in nature and five of them are physical in nature. So when it says the spiritual ones, it says Hashem exists, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Ehad. What it's telling us, He's one, He exists. He's our God, He's one, and we should love Him with all our hearts. These are the spiritual ones. And, uh, and we should serve Him wholeheartedly also. This is spiritual. The five physical ones are teach them to your children, speak of them, Bind them as a sign on your head. Let them be frontlet in the center of your head. And uh, bind them as a sign in your hand. Be them frontlet in the middle of your head, on the center of your head. And write them on the doorpost of your houses and on your gates. So if you look at the Shema, it has these 10 uh, ways of keeping ourselves connected to God, both in the spiritual and in the, spirit, in the, in the physical sense. So our masters of blessed memory have said, why is the section of the Shema placed before the section of um, you carefully obey my commandments in the Barim, like it's before that. And it says here that we first have to accept upon ourselves the unity of Hashem, the yoke of, get of heaven. We have to, to be able to accept the yoke of heaven. We first have to see that Hashem is one, that everything is Him. And once we accept that everything is Hashem, then it's easier for us to, to connect to the yoke of God and do His, His mitzvot. So I leave you here today. I wish you a beautiful week. And remember, live a little higher. Thank you.